Good afternoon. Uh, James already discussed the rise of digital platforms and estimates of the platform economy, both globally and in Asia, as well as the social good arising from platforms. Measuring the size of a platform economy depends on what we mean by a platform. Thus, it is crucial to have a statistical framework for measuring the platform economy, which is the focus of my talk. Allow me to firstly situate the rise of platforms in the context of the rapid digitalization and use of the internet before I provide the main highlights of our study from a definition of platforms to topologies and data sources. Then I close with a summary, policy implications and ways forward. The resulting digital transformation has been spurred by the rapid use of the internet. By end 2019, the internet has penetrated half of the population in Asia Pacific a huge increase from 2005 when only less than 10% had access to the net. But we still have digital divides since the other half of Asia still has not used the net. Aside from the internet, there are also two drivers of increased digitalization, digital data and digital platforms. If we had a good estimate of the size of the platform economy, this could improve the accuracy of current macroeconomic and financial statistics. But measuring the platform economy is very complex. It's not straightforward. In the Philippines in particular, we have seen the rising use and importance of the internet and social media with the country leading the globe in time spent on the net, 10 hours on average. Some say partly because of the slow speed. The bulk of that time, over four hours, is spent on social media as of 2019 and recent data as of 2020, not cited in the study, still suggests that the country continues to lead the world in use in time on, you, on the net and use of social media. Many Filipino users of social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram are females and among the young age 20, 18 to 24. Thus, social media influencers and platforms have targeted these social, social media users for fashion and beauty products. Prior to the pandemic, spending on e-commerce in the Philippines is relatively small. A total of $4.7 billion in 2018 on online purchases with more than three-fourths of this $3.5 billion on online travel purchases. And at per capita, spending was just $18 on online consumer goods purchases in 2018. The PSA has... The Philippine Statistics Authority has recently come up with estimates of the digital economy, suggesting that the digital economy has risen from 6.9% of GDP in 2012 to 10.1% in 2018. Their concept of the digital economy is, however, much larger than the platform or internet economy. Other data producers have given alternative figures. Google Temasek and Bain says internet economy in Philippines is at 2.5 billion, equivalent to 2.1% of GDP, growing between 20% and 30% annually since 2015. Uh, the Hendrick Foundation says digital trade-enabled benefits to Philippines were valued at 160 billion pesos or $3.2 billion. Digital Filipino and iMetrics estimates that in uh, 2018, e-commerce was 9.5% of GDP based on their Purchasing Managers Index. These varying estimates of the internet economy are due to the differences in statistical frameworks coverage and data sources. It should be noted that the platform economy is not currently in the radar of most national statistics offices, given the absence of commonly accepted definition of what we mean by a platform, or the platform economy and the wider digital economy and the digital sector. While the digital economy could be defined in terms of the digital sector, defining digital transactions could also be an alternative approach to defining the digital economy. And the possible criterion for di distinguishing transactions is how the transaction is made, what is transacted, and who is involved. Platform economy measurement is challenging since platforms might not be located physically in a country concerned. Thus, the economic transactions are not directly part of national statistics. Also, platforms are cross-sectoral and they don't easily fit in official classification systems. Another challenge is transactions are not always financial and businesses are not the only actors. A large number of persons also participate in platforms. However, 
ad hoc methods, for instance, web scraping of site usage, together with conduct of new surveys, have been used by new data providers to estimate the platform economy. But the direction and extent of bias in these methods and the coverage is unknown. The starting point of a statistical framework in, in, for measuring the platform economy are definitions and concepts. Following the definition of platforms as a digital intermediary and infrastructure that brings together various parties through the internet to interact, thereby matching supply and demand in a multi-sided mar market, we see that platforms are digital matchmakers. Aside from in infrastructure, interactions are also a functional layer of the platforms. Their relationships among actors, identified as B2B, B2C, C2C, and across time, uh, the distinction between C2C and B2C might be fuzzy. Uh, the study gives us uh, details on various features of platforms. Major ones include infrastructure, ecosystem, new business models, governance, and these features of platforms can lead us to categorize platforms in various ways, starting with functionalities, the strategies for platform participation, and a combination of criteria. We can also classify platforms structurally into super platforms, platform constellations, standalone platforms, but these typologies are fluid, partly because across time, the categories may not be mutually exclusive given the fast pace by which platforms retrofit themselves according to demands and their capabilities. Another key step in the statistical framework is identifying data needed and indicators to be measured. In these three slides, we give a sample of needed data and indicators on the platforms, the providers of service, and the platform users. It should be noted that a conceptual framework Beyond the conceptual framework, we also need a statistical framework such as uh, institutional arrangements to support uh, the integration of data compiled from various sources. Further, the conceptual framework should be operationalized as an integrated production chain from the collection of basic data to the communication of statistics. These indicators that I, we showed suggest uh, several data sources that are needed. Current surveys like the labor force surveys, the ICT usage of households and of businesses could be modified to target providers and users of platforms, but they don't target the online platforms themselves. So we need a new dedicated survey to, uh, to actually survey the online platforms. But the general experience is that platforms might not be willing to share information. If there is already a list of online platforms with URLs available, we could use web scraping, to combine desired information from the websites of these platforms, uh, though this is not always a straight, straightforward exercise. This innovative data source could be combined, however, with various traditional sources. Our In the Philippines, our D Department of ICT conducted for the first time a household survey in ICT. Results suggest that among Filipinos aged 10 years and over, less than half use the internet, of which more than half are in Metro Manila and neighboring regions. Among Filipinos aged 10 years and over who go online, the bulk of internet activity is, surprise, surprise, on social media, 91%, followed by access to information, 41%, only around 6% and 1% respectively go online for professional life and online transactions. New data from Google Temasek uh, suggests that amid the pandemic, Filipinos have made much more use of platforms to cope with restrictions and movements, and that such behavior will be sustained in a post-COVID world. Our DICT survey suggested that a total of 15.5 billion pesos was spent in the country on online purchases. And for the total monthly income, average 12.3 billion pesos, clothing garnering a fifth of online income, a tenth went to cosmetics, another tenth came from income from food, including groceries, alcohol, and tobacco. Average monthly income of Filipinos from, from online selling was around 90 US dollars or 8,700 8, pesos. Some areas outside Metro Manila, particularly Davao and Eastern Visayas, led in average income from online selling. In summary, with the rise of platforms, new data are needed. Given the complex business processes of platforms, it's a statistical challenge to actually 
uh, obtain data from platforms. However, some work has begun on measuring the digital economy and specifically the platform economy. But this is a challenge because of the complexity, cross-sector and cross-border capacity and rapid growth of platforms. NSOs, however, can re-engineer their existing surveys, um, LFS, business surveys, household and business surveys on ICT usage, and supplement these traditional data sources with innovative data sources like web scraping. The challenge is how NSOs can incorporate these data sources into national accounting. For instance, in the case of households, we can't merely think of the household sector for, uh, for the expenditure side, but also from the production side, given the rising incomes and production from platform participation. Technology and platforms can bring about social good, but these developments may also bring about risks on fair competition, taxation, trustworthiness, consumer rights, data privacy, and decent working conditions. This requires at least some amount of regulation to maintain economic benefits and social good, as well as ensure that platform dividends are inclusive. But there must be a lot of care so that regulations do not give burdens that can stifle innovations. Thank you. That's all.